Welcome back. This morning in D.C., a joint session of Congress. Members of the House and Senate got together to hear from Israeli President Isaac Herzog. It was to celebrate 75 years of the state of Israel and to reaffirm our alliance with that country. President Herzog was welcomed in the House chamber with a standing ovation, but there were also empty seats. Some of those were because of scheduling conflicts, like Representative Betty McCollum. She said she had another meeting at the same time and couldn't make it, but would read the remarks. But a handful of progressive Democrats, including Representative Ilhan Omar, missed it on purpose, protesting Israel's treatment of Palestinians under Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. And that absence came on the heels of a vote last night in the House on a resolution Republicans rushed out after comments this weekend from a Democratic Congresswoman, Pramila Jayapal, saying Israel is a racist state. That's what she said, but she has since apologized and said what she meant is that the Israeli government, in her opinion, their actions are racist. But once it was said, the re resolution was drafted. And it said that Israel is not a racist or an apartheid state and that Congress rejects all forms of anti-Semitism. Each member of Congress had to vote, yes, I agree with that, or no, I do not. Congressman Dean Phillips from Minnesota is Jewish. And I wanted to talk to him about the resolution and about the rhetoric, again right now swirling around anti-Semitism. So I did so this morning. The resolution in question passed overwhelmingly, but the backstory as to why it came to be in the first place matters. Saying Israel is racist is a step too far for many, anti-Semitic even some would say, but to say recent policy and actions of the Israeli government are a problem, that is not anti-Semitic. Even our Jewish congressman would agree with that. It is not anti-Semitic to criticize the Israeli government's policies. And in the case of Israel, I'm not pleased with the current government. There's a very big difference, though, in condemning the leader of a party, of a government, uh, and an entire country and people. And that, I think, is the distinction. And that is why last night, when Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib got up to say she did not support the resolution because of the actions of the Israeli government when it comes to its treatment of Palestinians, Congressman Phillips sat behind her. And yes, uh, listening to my friend and colleague Rashida Tlaib's remarks was difficult. Current Prime Minister Netanyahu on his policies towards Palestinians, quote, beat them up, not once, but repeatedly, beat them up until it's unbearable, and said that Israel must, quote, crush Palestinian hopes for a fully sovereign state. Difficult for him as a supporter of Israel and a defender of Palestinians Israel's as well. He sat and listened, and Congress then he tomorrow. said. But what the cameras didn't show and what people are probably not aware of is after her remarks, um, I gave her a hug because she and I, despite very different backgrounds and very different perspectives, uh, have come to become friends and have affection for one another because I know in her heart her authenticity relative to this very difficult issue between Israelis and Palestinians. Her grandmother lives in the West Bank. Uh, it's very personal for her. And to Rashida's credit, Representative Tlaib's credit, she understands the same in my heart. Israel's government, as Representative Phillips said, is one he is critical of as well. Jana, I have sat face to face with Benjamin Netanyahu, Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel, in recent months to express my very sentiment as it relates to the security of Israel uh, and the need for Palestinian self-determination. Uh, they are not mutually exclusive. In fact, they're mutually mandatory. Israel itself, however, he believes should be supported. Its people are not its government. Israel has sworn enemies uh, on all of its sides, people that wish to see it wiped off the face of the earth, and as the only place of refuge for Jewish people at a time when anti-Semitism is uh, horrifyingly increasing, both here and abroad, I just want to remind my progressive colleagues uh, that I think we have a collective responsibility uh, to have empathy also for Jewish people. Back to the vote on that resolution. We mentioned that Representative McCollum and Representative Omar didn't go to the speech today by the Israeli president. Well, on the vote, Representative McCollum didn't vote in favor or against it. She voted present. Representative Omar voted no, joining eight other Democrats. It passed, as we mentioned. The vote was 412 with yes and nine on no.